Welcome, this is the first installment in a multiple part series on building a web presence, where we're gonna cover everything that goes into getting your site online. For example, identifying target keywords, choosing a technology stack, finding the right domain, SEO and inbound marketing, email, setting up your servers, analytics, advertising, taking payments, security, and so on. To give a practical example, I needed some subject matter. And what I've decided to do is develop a web presence for an e-commerce site. And to give you some insight into what I'm going to be building, here's my 30 second elevator pitch. I love a nice fitting, high quality t-shirt, such as those made by American Apparel. However, I get tired of wearing plain, boring, solid color shirts every day. So I'd love to have a screen printed option, except as I get older, all of the screen printed options like this or this seem too juvenile or they're communicating some idea that I'm not always in the mood to communicate. I just want simple, basic designs and patterns like this or this printed on premium, high quality t-shirts. Now, admittedly, I'm unlikely to make any money doing this as I'm the 10 millionth person to try and sell shirts on the internet. So I'm gonna set a constraint that I'm not gonna spend more than $500 implementing this idea. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In this first installment, we're gonna just cover the following areas. Determining the market for our product or service, choosing the keywords that we wanna target, evaluating our competition, finding the right domain name, and then we're gonna take a quick look at branding and branding assets. So diving right in, one of the best tools you can use for determining whether there's a demand for your product or service is the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Basically, you can put in a keyword related to your idea and see how much search traffic those terms are receiving. This will not only help you validate your demand, but it'll also give you insight into which keywords you should target with your inbound marketing strategy. So go ahead and head over to the Google AdWords website and log in with your Google account. Then click on Tools, Keyword Planner, and finally search for new keyword and ad group ideas. As for the search term I'm gonna use, if I could sum up my idea with a single phrase, it would be simple shirt or basic t-shirt. So let's put those phrases into the search and see what comes up. First of all, if we click on keyword ideas, we can see the average monthly search results for our search terms. You can filter these statistics on the left-hand side, targeting your results by location or by language, and then also by different time frames. And if we go back to the ad group ideas, we can see different collections of keywords related to our search. We can see that keyword groups such as design tee and shirt printing are very popular, garnering hundreds of thousands of searches a month. And if we click on any of these groups, there will be a list of keywords inside that we can sort by average monthly searches or the cost per click or the difficulty. So after sorting through these suggestions, I found the following terms, which I wanna target. Simple t-shirt designs, which yields about 320 searches a month. Simple t-shirt, which yields about 260 searches a month. And minimal t-shirt, which yields about 140 searches a month. And you can see that these are easy to medium competition keywords. And this competition refers to how many other people are bidding on these search terms in AdWords. And the suggested bid is between one and $4, which is how much Google suggests you pay to get your ads shown in these results. Now, quick note, of course, there are other searches which yield a lot more search results, but they're not really related to the niche that I'm targeting. I feel like with these three keywords, even though there's in total maybe about 500 searches a month, I'm gonna earn that click from anybody who's searching for that term because I'm gonna have a site dedicated to exactly what they're searching for. Minimal t-shirts, simple t-shirts, etc. Now, quick Google search for these terms reveals that no one's currently running advertising for these terms. And additionally, the pages that do appear aren't really targeting these search terms directly. They're sort of like a long tail page that's buried deep within a larger site. And we can certainly see that there's no one particular site that's trying to cater to this niche. So in sum, there's at least a few hundred people looking for minimal t-shirts every month, and it should be trivially easy to rank our page on the first page of Google for the terms identified above. So because it's kind of hard to find a good .com, should you go out and register one of these new GTLDs, for example, .today or .ny or .coke or things like that? Well, I would say no. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with alternative top-level domains. After all, Instagram, which started out using the .am TLD, did just fine building a billion-dollar company. But with all the effort that it takes to make a site even semi-successful, why not put in a little bit of effort on the front end and find an available .com? Additionally, from an SEO standpoint, Google has repeatedly reduced the value of the exact match domain. So there's less reason to pick up somecoolidea.io. One of my favorite examples of this is the ugly sweater company, tipsyelves.com. In November of 2014, terms related to ugly sweater yielded 4,672,000 searches. That's a lot of money to be made in ugly sweaters. Yet the tipsyelves.com domain was the number one result, ranked ahead of sites like uglysweaterstore.com. And that's because they focused on their branding rather than on trying to register an exact match domain. And then they allowed their content and link profile to rank them for the target keywords. So how do you find a great .com that's available? 
Impossible, you might say. For example, both the singular and plural versions of simple shirt, minimal shirt, and basicshirt.com are already registered. Sometimes I feel like every .com domain in the world has already been registered. And in fact, at the time this video was recorded, there were exactly 116,253,792 registered .com domains. And you can look up this number for yourself over at domaintools.com. See the link in the description below. Now, domaintools.com has these exact numbers because VeriSign, the company that runs the .com registry, must publish their zone records for every registered .com. That's sort of how this whole DNS system works. And if you want to check out more on how the DNS system works, check out my video on the DNS system. Now, 116 million may seem like a lot, but if you combine two English words together, there's actually billions of combinations. So let me show you some of my favorite tools that you can use to find available .com domains consisting of two English words. The first one up is namestation.com, and although you need to register to use the service, you can conduct up to 10 searches per day without paying any money. One of my favorite tools is the append keyword list function, and you get there after you log in, click on domain name generators, then on append keyword list. And this is by far the most comprehensive tool you can use if you already have a word you want to be part of the domain. As they have over 200 categorized word lists that you can pair your chosen keyword with. And there's even a category for simplicity, which I'll use for this search to pair with the keyword shirt. So let's go ahead and generate our results. And as you can see, the available domains listed in blue below. Right away, the domain leanshirts.com seems like it would be a decent option for what I'm trying to do. Also, you can see the domains in gray, which are the ones that were on the list that are already registered. Next, let's head over to the related words section, which is really useful if you already have two words. For example, in my case, I'm trying to find a domain related to simple shirts. So let's put a simple in the query for related words and append it with the keyword shirts. And again, we get a nice list of search results. And as we scroll down, we can see that there's actually 14 pages of available domains that have been found by pairing related words to the keyword simple with the keyword shirts. Now, while NameStation is a good tool, let's take a look at a completely free option. One I really like is leandomainsearch.com. It does something similar to NameStation in that it pairs keywords with your chosen search term. So let's go ahead and put in our term shirt and filter the results to end with the search term and then order them by length. Again, right off the bat, baseshirts.com seems kind of nice. And if we click it, we can see that the Twitter handle at baseshirts is also available, which is great from a branding standpoint. Finally, let's check out namemesh.com, which is another completely free option. And like NameStation's related word search, namemesh does a really good job when you have two words that you want to use. So let's put in simple shirt and click generate. Now we've got a few different columns here with some alternate TLD suggestions along with some mashups of our query. But what I find most useful is the similar column, which replaces our query with related terms and scrolling down the domain neatshirt.com looks pretty good. And if we click it, we can see that both the Twitter handle and the Facebook page are available. I think this is the one I'm gonna go with. In short, it's easy to spell. It has a cool double meaning as it could be neat as in neat and tidy or neat as in cool. So let's take our neat shirt name and run it through namecheck.com, which is a site that checks the availability of a name on various social media sites. We can see right away the Twitter's available. So it's Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, and Pinterest. And since the exact handles are available on most of the important sites, it seems like I'll be able to man maintain a pretty consistent web presence for my brand. But consistently presenting your brand across your entire web presence doesn't end with having a consistent brand name. You also need a consistent set of brand assets that you can use across the various social media platforms. Starting with text, you'll need a tagline and a few sentence blurb to include in your website's title. This text should be keyword rich and instantly convey what it is that your product or service does. For example, here's what I went with for neat shirt. Tagline, simple designs printed on premium quality t-shirts. Blurb. Shop for minimalist designs printed on premium, high-quality t-shirts at neatshirt.com. All of our shirts feature simple patterns on American Apparel tees, so you know they'll fit great. Next, you need to pick a consistent color scheme of three to five colors. And I don't just mean blue, light green, etc. I want you to write down the specific hex values that you're going to use. So for neat shirt, I've chosen the following colors and corresponding hex values. A dark blue, a muted red, a medium gray, and then of course white. Moving on, you'll need some kind of banner, as most social media outlets allow you to add backgrounds to your profile. Your banner should be at least 2560 by 1440 pixels, and you can either use some sort of simple pattern in your chosen color scheme with your tagline, or take a high quality picture of either your business or your product. Finally, we come to logos. You're gonna need two separate logos, one square one to use as a profile picture, and one rectangular logo for your website's header. 
It's also really important that the logos be vectors, either a scalable vector graphics or SVG file, an EPS file, or an Adobe Illustrator file. Now the difference between a vector image and a bitmap image such as JPEG is that the vector image is made up of a set of shapes and coordinates, whereas a bitmap is made up of pixels. So when you blow up a bitmap, the pixels get larger and the image looks fuzzy. However, with a vector, no matter how large you make it, the image will still look smooth. So putting it all together, here's the brand that I've created across Neatshirt's Twitter profile, their Facebook page, Google Plus profile, and printer's page. Now admittedly, none of my assets are very good. However, it's good enough for now, and more importantly, it's consistent. Anybody who visits my Twitter profile and then visits my Facebook page is gonna know that it's the same company. And if you need help creating these branding assets, then the website Fiverr is a great place to find cheap logos or ad copy for just $5 per gig. So I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that like button or leave a comment. I'd love to hear your tips and tricks related to finding quality keywords, domain names, or branding assets. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe in order to see the rest of this series. In the next video, we're gonna be covering setting up your web server, connecting it to your domain, and connecting your domain to your Google Apps account. So that way you can send and receive email at your chosen domain. So again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.